Hello, everybody. Happy Saturday. Welcome to another episode and another edition of the Everything Medicare Podcast. And I just wanted to thank you for tuning in. I am Christian Brindle. I am your host, where every single week I bring you podcast episodes. It's an effective way for us to bring you the changes and everything going on in the world of Medicare and everything that has to do with your retirement, where whether it be Social Security, Medicaid, Medicare, um, anything that goes with that golden age called retirement. And today is May 4th, 2019, and it's a wonderful Saturday. I hope you had a fantastic week, and I hope the first... Um, Four, five, four-ish months of the year have gone well for you. I hope this message finds you doing well in great health and great spirits. Today I wanted to talk about some content that's been coming out through a couple of different um, people in the insurance industry, and I wanted to give you my thoughts. So basically, I've discussed this in the past on this podcast particularly, but today I'm going to go really in-depth with it. So... Over the years, I have been telling everybody that I believe that the Medigap Plan G is the best Medigap plan. And let's be honest here, pretty much anybody that's anybody in the insurance industry, anybody that's a credible voice has been saying the same thing. Um, Now, we're seeing people kind of turn in the other direction to recommend a plan N. And it's not just one person. You know, there's been multiple people probably for the past 12 months that have been saying these things. Um, And I wanted to give address it and give you my opinion on it. Um, And first things first, I'm going to give you their argument for why we should start shifting towards the plan N. And I'm going to give it to you along with some facts, okay, when I do address it in segment two. But first things first, let's talk about the, the reasoning behind switching to the plan N. Okay, so if this is your first time listening to me, then you may not know as much about the G and the N as a lot of people that listen to me week after week. So I'm going to quickly address it. A Medigap plan, plain and simple, pays after Medicare. A person that has Medicare Parts A and Medicare Parts B receive medical coverage. They both cover different things. Together, they give a person medical coverage, such as hospitalization coverage, um, doctor's appointments, surgeries, blood work, durable medical equipment like wheelchairs and oxygen tanks, and et cetera, et cetera. Um, And basically what they do is they pay a portion of things, but they come with deductibles, co-insurances for certain things, um, multiple different deductibles, to be frank with you. And for the most notable part, a lot of important issues leave 20% of the bills behind for you to pay, you know, and so they leave quite a bit of -of out-of-pocket left over. So the purpose of a Medigap is to come in and pay what Medicare does not pay. It pays the deductibles. It pays... um, out-of-pocket expenses. It pays the 20% that Medicare does not pay when they pay 80%. Um, and these, are, these, these types of programs and plans are issued through insurance companies, private insurance companies. You know, and um, they're, they're, they go by the names of Medigaps. They also go by the names of Medicare supplements. I've done multiple podcast episodes about Medicare supplements. So if you want me to go in more detail on the basics, just go back Listen to some of those episodes first. I believe my most detailed Medicare supplement podcast episode was episode two. Um, So whatever platform you might be listening to this on, you'll be able to go back and listen to that one from the beginning, and it's incredibly detailed. Um, Basically, folks, a plan G is a plan. So um, I'm not going to get much into the plan F, but for many, many years... The Medicare supplement known as the Plan F, it came into effect into the marketplace in 1992. And in 1992, it was the most popular Medicare supplement of all time, and it stayed that way for a very, very long time, probably up until about 2012, 2013 time period. Um, So about 20 years, and it remained relevant for years after that, and every year since then it's just become less relevant. The, the reason why it was so popular was because the Medicare supplement known as Plan F paid everything, 100% of a person's medical bills, um, 
They left no out-of-pocket as long as the, the procedure or as long as the coverage was approved by Medicare first. That's the key with a supplement, folks. If Medicare pays, they will pay. If Medicare doesn't pay, they won't pay afterwards. They're like a copycat insurance. They're a true secondary. They supplement Medicare, but they don't pay necessarily for things that Medicare does not pay for unless you pick up a, a Medicare supplement company that comes with some kind of discounts on the side, you know, like glasses discount programs, um, hearing aid discount programs, gym memberships, et cetera, et cetera. And there are some companies that provide those. Um, so that was Plan F. It was so popular for so long. The, there were two reasons why it fell out of popularity. Number one, the, there were people on the plan since 92 with lots of these major carriers. Um, and that caused... And obviously, you know, the people on the plans were incredibly older, you know. You know, the people that have been on in the 90s that, may, let's say, for example, are still on today, some of them are in their late 80s, early 90s. Some of them might even be pushing 100. And for most people, just statistically speaking, the longer you're alive, the more your health expenses typically go up. And that's not the case for everybody, but for most people, statistically speaking, that's that's just true. And so these people pay out more claims because they've been on the plans for so long. That causes a big burden on the insurance company, especially due to the fact that so many people in that age bracket across the nation are on plan F. And essentially, folks, this would cause the rates and the prices to fluctuate and become inflated. Not only that, Medicare supplements raise the prices every year as you get older. Pretty much all of them do it, and there's really no way around it. This caused the, the Plan F rate increases with almost every carrier to just shoot up through the roof. So not only were people paying more um, their first year, but they'd pay more for years to come because of typically very high rate increases. I'd say probably north of 10% per year with most carriers. Now, in 2010, um, Congress passed a bill that brought a few new Medigap, Medicare supplement plans into the equation. Now, Medigap and Medicare supplement plans, before I go any further, are designed by the government, and they're named after letters. So that's why you have Plan F, Plan G, Plan N, Plan L, Plan K, et cetera, et cetera. And basically, they are all designed by the government as far as how much of what Medicare doesn't pay for that they're going to pay for. Um, and they're all quite a bit different. Some plans don't cover very much. Some plans cover quite a bit. It just really depends. And these plans are what's known as standardized, meaning that they're all going to be the same benefits from carrier to carrier. It's just the carrier controls two different aspects of it. The first one is the price that you're going to pay. So, for example, you could literally pay double the price for a plan F with one carrier and half the price for a plan F with another carrier, and they're exactly the same plans, to put that into perspective. The second thing that makes it differ from carrier to carrier is how much they're going to raise the rates every year as you get older, because um, they all do it. And so our focus has always been to control rate increases, but at the same time to make sure that you're on a plan that's going to provide you with accurate and detailed coverage. So plan F had been shooting up for that reason. The, 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 the next reason and the last reason why Plan F has gone up so much over the years is Plan F participates in a program called Guaranteed Issue. And to simplify it, I don't want to overcomplicate things for you, but to simplify what Guaranteed Issue is, is Guaranteed Issue is let's say someone is on an employer plan and the employer decides they're going to cancel, or let's say a retiree plan, I think that's more... Um, I think that's more consistent. Let's say you're on a retiree plan with your with your the the company you worked for in your career, and they offer you retirement insurance. Let's say there's a thousand people in your area that are offered this through that company. Let's say they decide to pull the plug and cancel all of you, and you're left with nothing other than your Medicare A and B in your retirement. Well, certain Medicare supplements, Medigap plans, were required to accept these people that were canceled off of something. It could be from that. It could be from a Medicare Advantage plan pulling out of a state and canceling everybody or an area um, or something else. But these Medigap, Medicare Supplement plans, Plan F, Plan C, for example, were required to accept people without health questions because 
With a Medicare supplement, you're required to pass health questions when you're trying to change from one to another, typically. Okay? So, simply put, Plan F participated in this program called Guaranteed Issue. So they were taking in, well, and they still do every year, they take in a tremendous amount of people that are being canceled in various things and they're getting past the health questions. They're not allowed to ask health questions. Every carrier is required to take these people and they have to pay out claims for these people. And so they're taking on a tremendous amount of people that are sick and people that they probably wouldn't normally take due to the health questions in a normal situation. But since they participate in guaranteed issue, they're required to take them. This causes the rates for everybody to go up. Okay. So those are the main two reasons. Number one, they've been around so long. There's so many people on them that are in a certain age bracket because they've been around so long. And number two, they are participating in the guaranteed issue program they're required to with every single insurance company. Um, And so they take on tons of people every year that have all kinds of health problems. Anything you can think of, they have to take it if they're canceled in a certain situation such as that. So it's fairly simple. Plan F stayed relevant for 20 plus years And Plan F is exiting the equation in 2020. I've talked about this in the past. Go back and listen to my other episodes because I only have so much time on this one. Um, But Plan F is exiting the equation in 2020. It doesn't mean you're going to lose Plan F if you have it already. What it means is people that become eligible for Medicare after 2020 will no longer be able to sign up or enroll into a Plan F with any, any insurance company. So if you're eligible for Medicare now, you'll be able to get a Plan F after 2020. There's been a lot of misconstrued information that's been confusing people with this. The argument for going from Plan G to Plan N for a lot of these people has been this. The Plan G is identical to the F in every way. It pays everything that Medicare does not pay except for what something that's known as the Medicare Part B deductible. This year, in 2019 that I'm talking to you, that Part B deductible is $185 per year. It's annual. It's one time per year. The reason why people would pick a G over an F is because the price difference. Um, you're probably going to save three, sometimes even four times as much in premium between an F to a G and frankly, you could pay the deductible three, four, five times with the amount of premium savings alone. And like I said, the Plan G with a Part B deductible only charges it one time per year. So you're saving money whether you have to pay the deductible or not. And that's been the idea of the Plan G. Not only that, the Plan G has not participated in guaranteed issue. Now, in 2015, they introduced a bill called MACRA. I mean, we've always been aware of it. And MACRA was the bill that Congress passed that set into motion that a lot of changes were going to happen in 2020 in the Medigap Medicare supplement market. The first one I already told you, Plan F, grandfathering in, and people not being able to purchase it if they became eligible for Medicare after 2020. They're doing away with Plan F. Plan F had a great run. They're doing away with it. That's what it means in a nutshell. Plan G is going going through some changes as well in 2020. And the main change is that they are accepting people for guaranteed issue like Plan F did. So let that sink in. The main reason why Plan F rates have been shooting up so much, not the only reason, but part of the reason, is because that they have been accepting people on guaranteed issue for so many years. Now Plan G is going to do that. That's probably going to affect their rate increases going forward. The idea is for people to start switching over to a Plan N because a Plan N is identical to a G in every way because the the N has a $185 deductible. The Part B deductible, they don't pay that, same as G, but the Plan N also comes with some out-of-pocket copay. So they pay up they they charge up to $20 for a doctor visit. Could be less. Um, but it's going to be no more than 20, but it could be as high as 20. They'll charge $50 copay for an emergency room visit, and then they do not pay for excess charges. Now, but typically, doctors don't charge excess charges. In some states, it's even not legal. And in my career, I've been doing this for many years, never seen a doctor charge an excess charge, ever. 
in any state, and I've worked in multiple. So the idea is you, people move over to the plan N, they're going to have the closest thing as far as coverage goes to the G that they have, and they're going to avoid these massive rate increases that could potentially come going forward. Sounds good on paper, but there are some flaws to it. Now, it might be a good idea for some people. However, I think that there's some flaws that <laughs> conveniently are being left out by the people that are bringing this argument to the table, and I wanted to give you my, t- my take on it. Stay with me into segment two, and I'll tell you exactly what I think about this. Welcome back, folks. Thanks for sticking with me on this week's Everything Medicare podcast, and this is a big episode. Okay, so I'm very excited for this to launch and for this to drop. Okay, so segment one, just a recap. We went over why Plan F isn't relevant anymore, what happened to it, the history, probably more than I would have liked because I've talked about it a lot in recent episodes. Um, Plan G and N coming into the equation, what's changing with Plan G in 2020 with with this new bill that passed from Congress, not really new, back in 2015, Um that's a cause that's going to start having them accept people that have guaranteed issue. And a lot of people are starting to now say you should jump on the plan N bandwagon. Okay, so here's my thoughts. That might work for some people. There's a lot of people that pick up plan Ns because they just like having the peace of mind. Or excuse me, excuse me. There's a lot of people that pick up Medicare supplements of all kinds, F, G, N, whatever that pick it up primarily because they want the security of having the good coverage. They don't mind paying the extra premium opposed to an advantage plan or something else, Um, but they don't really need it. They just like having the peace of mind. They're afraid of what might happen. There's millions of people in this country that are in that boat. A lot of people. For those people they probably can afford to take the risk with the plan N. Now, you might ask me, what's the risk? Plan N has a huge flaw. Huge flaw. Okay. And that is the copays that it charges. It's always been this way. Plan N isn't a new plan. Plan N came into the equation in 2010-11 time period. Plan N's been around for almost a decade now, folks. Plan There's a reason why... Plan N has probably been the second, maybe third tier Medicare supplement all these years. Now, for some people, I think that this isn't necessarily a bad strategy, and I'm going to start um, moving the Plan N up in my rankings, but I have said, and this might change down the road, as the market changes, my opinions need to change. And this is a change in the market, although I still believe that the Plan G is the better plan, even if it does have a little bit higher rate increases, and I'll tell you why. History repeats itself, especially in the Medicare market. Plan F, like I said, has been around since 92, and all of the problems that caused the prices to become inflated and the rates to start shooting up, it took 20 plus years. Plan F was the clear-cut, number one Cadillac plan with every insurance company for 20-plus years. There were other plans in the fray, you know, like a Plan J and things like that that were competitive, but Plan F was always the Cadillac plan ever since it came out up until about 2012, 13, maybe even 2014, somewhere in that time period. These changes didn't happen overnight. It took a long time, a long time to take effect and to impact it and for the plan F to go down the way it did now. Plan G will not last forever. Let me say that again. Plan G will not last forever. But guess what? Neither will any other Medigap. It goes for the plan N. The plan N has a lot of people on them too. Plan F and plan N and plan G came into the market at the exact same time. So, plan G has this red mark happening because they're going to start taking on people that have guaranteed issue. It may affect your rate increases. 
They're probably going to be higher than they were in the past. But guess what? Don't let people scare you. They're not going to start going up tremendous amounts like a Plan F would. Not for a while anyway, not for probably a decade or more. Things don't happen overnight. And a Plan G is still the safe bet for a very long time to proceed. Now, the Plan N may be a good option for people to consider for some people, like I described earlier. People that, people that let's say, they have a Medigap or Medicare supplement just for the sake of having the protection, but they don't typically use it very much. They're fairly healthy. They just like to be overprotective, and there's nothing wrong with that. I understand. Um, those types of people may, might work. Here's the problem with the Plan N. No matter how much the prices differ, Plan N, like I said, charges you those copays to up to twenty dollars for a doctor's visit, fifty for an ER. Now, here's my take on it. Plan N, Plan N charges, like I said, up to twenty dollars for a doctor visit. It could be less, could be ten, could be fifteen, something like that. Depends on what the doctor is going to charge. There are so many people out there, so many people that spend so much more money per month being on a Plan N than a Plan G. And it's quite ridiculous, and I'll tell you why. That doctor copay is per visit. Every single one of us knows somebody. I have so many people that I work with and take care of that fall into this equation, and I've seen so many people over the years that they have, let's say, a condition where they're going to doctors all the time. Or let's say their health is starting to deteriorate. It's not what it once was. They're going to doctors all the time. Now, some people in this industry might tell you that it's, not, it's hardly going to be 20. It's probably going to be more like 10, 15. Some doctors might not even charge it. That's true. But what if someone's going to see a specialist for a condition they have and they're going once a week? The specialist almost always is going to charge you the 20 bucks, folks. I hate to break it to you. Almost always. So let's say you're going once a week to a specialist, $20 a pop. That's $80 a month in co-pays. $80 a month. Break that down into 12 months. Let's say you did that for a whole year. There's a lot of people that do. And just because you don't today doesn't mean you might not need to in the future. But let's break that down for 12 months. That would be... $960 $960 a year in co-pays, folks. $960 a year in co-pays. The rate increase difference from the G to the N is not going to be that different. I guarantee you. And let and if your health is that bad where you're going to a doctor every week, you're probably going to have some ER visits in there too. So let's throw another fifty hundred bucks in there because it's fifty dollar copay for an ER visit. you I mean, there's a lot of people would spend well over a thousand dollars more a year. In co-pays alone. And there's more people that fall into this, into this basket than you might think. And this is what the other quote-unquote experts are telling you. And they're not telling you the important things. Like this. This is not such a black and white thing. Where, okay, this change is happening with Plan G. They're going to start taking on people that have guaranteed issue. But as time goes on, the rates increases are probably going to get higher. But, so let's just all jump over to the Plan N. Even though this is a big deal, folks, this has been a reason why a lot of people have avoided the Plan N for so many years. It's because the potential for loss for you is great. Okay. What if you have a couple conditions? What if you see two doctors a week? I mean, we can get ridiculous about this. Let's say you see two doctors a month. Okay, let's be more conservative about it. Two doctors a month which a lot of people do. I mean, and let's say you're getting charged the $20 every visit. 40 bucks a month. Plan G, in my opinion, will go the way of the Plan F. I don't think that's wrong to where at some point, it's not going to be what it was. At some point, it's going to be unbuyable for a lot of people. At some point... The rate increases are going to be tremendously high, but it's not going to be in 2020, and, it, and it's not going to be anytime soon. It's going to take time for this puppy to happen. With the Plan G, what it gives you is you have basically a one-time-a-year deductible you have to pay for certain things if you encounter it, $185 a year, 
or whatever the Part B deductible doesn't have. Plan N has that too. Same exact thing. But that's all you pay with the Plan G. It gives you some kind of predictability. The Plan N, there's so much unpredictability. I'm, not, I'm saying that it's more attractive today than it used to be, but it's not a, 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 a black and white thing. It's not a night and day thing to where, oh, it's obvious this is the best thing. It's going to be a better option for people going forward than, than it used to be. But, there's, but let's slow down. Let's take a step back. Because in order for the, for the people that, you know, are using their plans a lot, they might have the rates go up a little bit more on a plan G, but they're gonna, it's going to be significantly less than what they'd pay in those copays. Period. And there's a lot of people that are using the plans this much that can pass health questions and underwriting. They could switch to a plan N if they wanted to. Because some insurance companies don't ask a lot of health questions. But here's the thing. It's, this is what it comes down to. You have to I've, I've said this from the beginning, and I'm not going to waver. Medicare is not a one-size-fits-all thing. It's not. You can't base your decisions on what your neighbor does, your family member does, your best friend does, someone at church does. Because they're not you. They have completely different sets of needs, preferences, everything. Individuals, folks. We're all individuals. We don't all need the same thing. The reason why top people in the insurance industry make these bold proclamations is because they want to take everybody they don't have and give them a reason to switch over to them. Because it's a new car. It's a new toy. Don't fall for it. Not saying it's not worth considering. That's not what I'm saying. But it is for some people. For others, it's not. It's not as humongous of a thing as they'd like you to believe. It might be a better option for some people. Only for some people, folks. Take this into consideration, what I'm saying. Because I guarantee you, from now until 2020 and probably after, you're going to hear all kinds of buzz about this change with the Plan G. And I'm being upfront and honest with you. You're going to see your rates go up more than they used to or have been after this change takes effect. But just know, the only other plan out there that's a positive alternative to change to would be an N, and the plan N has its problems, the same problems it's always had. And the potential for loss is greater for a lot of people than the potential for loss staying in plan G. At least for now. If you change to a plan N, let's say you change to a plan N today, it takes effect the first of next month, you, you change plans, you cancel your plan G, and let's say something happens with your health that you weren't expecting, because guess what? Every single one of us that has something happen to our health, they're not expecting it to happen. No one is. So let's say they switch over to plan N, their health just starts deteriorating, just they fall off a cliff for some reason. No one quite knows why. They're using the plan like crazy. They're they're paying all these doctor co-pays. And guess what? They end up spending a tremendous amount out of pocket that they wouldn't have if they just stayed on the G. Don't let this spook you. Don't let people convince you the sky is falling. This is good information for you to know. It's not saying that. And I'm not saying you to just blindly stick with the G. Take a look at your, your situation. See if it's worth it for you. If you think that you're going to be able to stay out of high usage departments, then maybe the N is worth thinking about. But there's always the danger that even though your health's good today, it might not be tomorrow. And the potential for loss, like I said, in the end is very high. Stay with me in segment three. Welcome back, folks, to our third and final segment of this week's Everything Medicare podcast. I hope, I hope, I, I hope something resonated with you today. If you've listened this far and you listened to what I had to say. 
So many people in this industry are in the industry and they do what they do and they say what they say to give themselves an edge over anybody else. Not to say, you know, they're at fault for making a profit. I mean, you know, every single person that works with an insurance agency like myself, we're here to make a profit. We're here to put food on the table, provide for our families. But at the same time, we have... We also want to make sure we're doing what's best for the customer and the client. And Medicare always will be a situation where it's a not a one-size-fits-all for everybody. Not every change or everything is going to impact everybody. You have to look at your own situation specifically, and you know it better than anybody else. You know it better than a slick-talking salesperson. And I've become a target for a lot of people of my peers Because I'm willing to tell you the truth. I'm willing to tell you things that they won't. There's a partial message in what you might hear about the argument for the plan, and they will not mention what I've mentioned today. They won't do it. They'll just say, guaranteed issue with plan G, plan N rates are going to go up slower. They won't even talk about the problems with the N. It's not like the end's a new plan, folks. It's been around this whole time. This change... Now, now the plan N has its upside now for some people. That's why I can't stress that enough, and I, I know I probably said it a, a million times now, but for some people, not everybody. You have to look at your situation. You are the best expert on you. So take this information I said today and... Think about it, look at it, know both sides of the argument because there are two sides. Plan N is more attractive today than it's ever been because of this change to Plan G. That's true, but Plan G still has a tremendous amount of value and it will for many, 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 many years to come, Such like, just like the Plan F did. Like I said, it took the Plan F 20 plus years for it to fall off. Plan G still has a long way to go and it still can help you out tremendously depending on your situation. Folks, I can't thank you enough for listening. Um, I love bringing you these episodes. I really feel like we're making a difference. Um, I appreciate your feedback. I appreciate your kind messages through on social media, emails, everything like that. Um, The best thing you can do to help us is we don't charge anything for this podcast. Our goal is to put information out there that nobody will tell you. And I guarantee you, no one tells you everything that I will Nobody. People look at the people look at podcasts as a way to, you know, generate new business for them. Not saying that we don't do that too, but that's not our our only focus. Our focus is to put information out there and to change this industry, to make it completely transparent, just like a window. So where you can see right through and there's no fog or anything clouding the window to make it so you can't see clearly. What you can do to help us is, if you're listening to us on a platform, we're on so many different platforms now, so you might not have the option, but if you're listening to us on a platform such as Apple Podcasts or iTunes, do us a favor, leave us a five-star review. It helps people find us better in our search engines. It would mean a lot to me. Um, Share it on your social medias. Tell a friend about us. Send a link to our podcast to your friend. Help us reach more people. Because we're, my objective is to help people with this and to provide information that's going to be valuable for them. Help me do that by recommending us to people, sharing us on your social medias, telling a friend or family member about what we're doing here that you think we could help or could learn a lot from listening, um, and leave us a review so more people can find us in the search engines. That would mean a tremendous amount to us, folks. As always... If you're on Medicare or about to be on Medicare and you're just not sure what to do, we work with people, particularly me and my company, Christian Brindle Insurance Services, um, for people that live in Utah, Florida, and Idaho. Those are the three states that currently we're licensed to work with people in. Um, where We specialize in Medicare health plans. We don't do anything else. So we're experts in this one thing. And primarily, folks, I believe that we can help you just as good, if not better than anybody else. I'm not saying that we're the only good brokerage out there, but I like to think that our, our ethics, our culture, 
has made us help people out where most agencies, the culture is to just take as much money from you as possible. And we just don't believe in that, folks. We have, we have no obligation to talking with us. So even if you just wanted to talk to C, um, we don't charge anything to work with us. It's the same price to work with me or someone at our company than it is to work directly through the insurance company. The difference is you get our service year round. Like I said, Utah, Idaho, Florida. Those are the three states. So if you're in one of those states and you'd like to talk with me just to see if there's anything you can do better, or maybe you're turning 65 and you don't know what to do, call our offices today at 801-255-5340, 801-255-5340, or if you're more comfortable with it, shoot me an email. I'd be happy to talk with you. Christian B, C-H-R-I-S-T-I-A-N, Christian B at xmission.com. The letter X and the word mission, M-I-S-S-I-O-N dot com. Christian B at xmission dot com. Thanks for listening, folks. Can't wait to talk with you on Monday again. And have a fantastic weekend. Thank you again.